Hello, my name is Dan Ring, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the new Planar Tracker feature found in Nuke 6.3. I'm going to start by demonstrating just how quick and easy it is to create a Planar Track, and then go into some of the basics of the Planar Tracker. In this shot, we want to track the top section of this post here. We start by creating a Planar Tracker from the Transform menu. Once it's created, we can start drawing the area we want to track straight away. When we're done, we can click this Track Forward button and we can watch it track to the end of the shot. While it's tracking, let me tell you more about the Planar Tracker. The Planar Tracker follows flat surfaces, where most points on the surface lie on the same plane. Things like walls, ceilings, sides of cars are good examples of planar surfaces, but it can often handle non-planar objects, such as faces or people. Generally, the more planar the surface, the better. Our tracker uses feature-based tracking. It tries to find the best feature tracks that agree with the plane that the user has drawn, and from those it derives a planar track. The important thing to remember is that planar tracking tracks regions, as opposed to small image patches. This means that you get a much more stable and accurate track compared to traditional 2D pattern trackers. For things like inserting images or set extension, it's nearly always faster and easier to use a planar tracker instead of some sort of projection inside a camera saw, for example. Right, so the tracking is finished, and if we scrub back and forth along the timeline, we can see it's done a very good job. That track is now ready to use. But first, let's go over just what happened. When we created the planar tracker, you'll notice that it also created a roto node as well. This is to allow a very tight integration of planar tracking with roto. In fact, the roto node is essential for the planar tracker to work, so always try and keep them connected. If we look inside the roto node, we'll see a planar track layer in the curves menu. This is a special type of layer that is used to define what is being tracked. In our example, we drew a shape for the top of the post. Notice that the shape outline is colored purple to indicate it's in a track layer, and will be used to define a region. If we wanted, we could draw more shapes inside this layer, which could, would all contribute to the same track. I'm going to rename this layer to Post. The Planar Tracker layer is also the place where all the results of the tracker are saved to. To be specific, they're keyed in the extra matrix knob in the transform tab for that layer. This means that anything we put in this layer will be affected by the track. When a roto or rotopaint node has a planar track layer, the tracking toolbar is now displayed in the viewer. This is a context sensitive toolbar to let you perform your entire tracking workflow from left to right. For example, tracking, display and correction, and export. All without having to go back to any node properties panel. We'll look at all these in detail in later tutorials. For now, the most useful knob here is the Planar Track Layer Selector. This shows the currently selected track layer and its associated shapes. You can see if you select the track shape, the selector changes accordingly. This is extremely useful when we have multiple track layers. We can also create whole new track layers ready for drawing and tracking. Now what I'd like to do is to insert this Nuke logo into our post track. To do this, I need to define where in the image I want the logo to be placed, and then export my track data. I first make sure that my post layer is selected, and then I click the correct plane button. This displays what's called the planar surface, shown here in blue. This is a diagnostic plane you can use to spot when tracks start to fail, and how to correct them. It's also used to define where to place images into the scene. However, when doing this, we need to move the corners of the surface at what we call the reference frame. That is, the frame where we first started the track. In this case, frame 1. If we move the corner points at any other frame, we are actually applying corrections, and we don't actually want that. So let's click the Go to Reference Frame button, just in case we forgot where we started. You'll see that at the reference frame, the planar surface is yellow. Now we're free to move the corners to where we want to place our image. If we want, we can use the grid to help us align up our corners.
Now let's finally export our track data. We can do this from the toolbar, again making sure that our post layer is selected. Clicking the export button, you can see that there are lots of options depending on what format you'd like. For our needs, we want a corner pin absolute. In this case, absolute means the input image will be fit into the bounds of the planar surface. Before we export an absolute, we can save ourselves some time by selecting the read node and then clicking the export button. This will automatically connect the corner pin and set the correct image format. To see our composited results, we add a merge node between the corner pin and the input sequence. I'm also going to add a small bit of motion blur to the corner pin for effect. I'm also going to close all of the property panels. This will hide all of the drawing overlays and make it easier to see our track. As you can see, the logo is sticking very tightly to the back of the panel. This is exactly what we want. This concludes our first tutorial of the Planar Tracker.